three. All right. <laughs> When I start, how can I take myself off? Just go to stop my video. Okay. Well, it's a little after 10 o'clock. Let's go ahead and get started and welcome everyone to today's webinar, Leveraging LinkedIn for Business Growth. I'm Paula McCain. I'm a recovery business advisor for the North Central Texas Small Business Development Center. Today is National Babe Ruth Day, Nas National Prime Rib Day, and National Devil Dog Day. <laughs> Choose your method of celebration. <laughs> uh, the SBDC is the leading provider of assistance for small businesses, and we're grant funded, and because we're grant funded, it allows us to offer our services such as this web webinar, such as uh, our consulting and advising, all at no cost to you. Uh, just a little housekeeping today. If we could uh, put all questions uh, in the chat box and we'll address them at uh, the appropriate time. Now, I would like to introduce Marsha Hudson. Marsha is a social media and branding specialist. Uh, she's been working with the University of Houston SBDC since 2015, teaching social media and digital marketing. Uh, she's a professor, professor of English at Wharton County Junior College in Sugarland. She received her education specialist degree from Walden University, attended Sam Houston State University and University of Houston. She's a professional photographer with her husband, specializing in branding, headshots, lifestyle, and real estate photography. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you so much, Paula. I'm so happy to be here. And we are going to get started. Okay, so today I'm so excited to be bringing this LinkedIn webinar to you all, Six Keys to Growing Your Business on LinkedIn. So I hope you're as excited as I am to be learning so much about the new, I call it the new LinkedIn, as LinkedIn has changed so much for us as business owners. So as always, we like to thank the North Central Texas Small Business Development Center uh, for bringing this webinar uh, to us. And I really like to thank them for inviting me to present this to you. So be sure and take screenshots, get your notes, things like that. Turn off your distractions if you want, because I know like me, I'm always on that phone, but you don't want to miss anything. So feel free to take screenshots and feel free to keep your your questions to the end because we're going to have a Q&A and uh, it's going to be great today. So what will you walk away with today? Well, I want to teach you uh, and give you an understanding of the new LinkedIn. And the reason why I say new LinkedIn is because um, if we think about it, LinkedIn used to be about resumes and job hunting, where it is so much more now, and LinkedIn is great for business owners. Uh, you're going to walk away with how to use it to grow your business, what to post and when to post, how to connect with potential customers, and how to increase your revenue. So this training is for you if you want to rethink LinkedIn and the new ways that you want to use it for your business, okay? This training is for you if you want to be consistent with LinkedIn and go all in. Consistency is key. If you want to grow an audience of people who want and need your services, if you want to learn all of the new features uh, for, for entrepreneurs, like I talked about the new LinkedIn, and if you want to make connections that will help build your business, 
then this webinar training is for you. So you want to stay to the end, write your questions down because we will have a Q&A. So I am Marsha Lynn Hudson and as uh, Paula int introduced about me, uh, I am a social media and branding strategist. Uh, I um, love teaching social media. I love helping small business owners, entrepreneurs. I am a writing professor. I love to write and, and read and research. So I've done so much research on the new LinkedIn. I'm also a blogger and a writer. And the biggest thing about me is I help entrepreneurs with strategies and action plans to create their brand online without being so overwhelmed and so confused, right? So today's agenda, I have six keys that I want to share with you today on how to grow your business with LinkedIn, how to build your brand with LinkedIn. So the first key we're going to talk about is your profile, your homepage. Um, then we're going to talk about the about section. There's also a feature section. Now that section is not on the business page of LinkedIn yet, but it is on the profile page, the feature section. Uh, we're going to talk about your content, what kind of content to post. Joining groups or how to create your own group on LinkedIn is very easy to create your own group and making connections and building relationships. These six keys that I've chosen today have helped me build my business on LinkedIn, and that's why I want to share them with you to help you build your business on LinkedIn. So what if you got one idea today to pivot your business? Because we are in a time where we have to pivot, whereas what we used to do even two years ago before the pandemic, we have to change now. And sometimes even me as a business owner, I'm like, okay, this is the way I used to do it. I've been in business a long time and this is the way it used to work for me, but it doesn't work like that anymore in our new culture. So you have to believe in yourself, push your limits and do whatever it takes to conquer your goals. Even if you have to make changes from doing things the way that you used to do. So we're going to be talking about pivoting today because we're not looking back anymore more. We're looking forward. And so we have to make some changes. So I want to give you a few statistics because for me, I know I don't like to, I, we have so much to do. Our time is so valuable and we don't want to waste time, but I wanted to give you some statistics on why you should even be using LinkedIn because I don't want you using a social site where it's not bringing in anything in for your business. So look how many members are on LinkedIn, 610 million. And look how many active members are on LinkedIn, over 300 million. So should we be on it if we have a business? The answer is yes. And the average income on uh, of a customer or an active member on LinkedIn, according to the research, they, uh, the average customer makes 70K. So if you have a business, a professional business, and maybe your products and services cost a little bit more, you definitely want to be on LinkedIn because they actually have the money to um, be able to afford services and businesses that may be a little bit more. And according to the statistics, these members have disposable income. Um, it's the world's largest professional network and site. And basically it's responsible for 80% of business to business leads on social media. So LinkedIn is different from Facebook. And I taught Facebook, um, maybe a month or so ago. And so the audiences are different. For LinkedIn, you're going to have more of a professional business to business audience they and they are looking for your services. So why should your company be on LinkedIn? Well, here are some things that you can do. You can showcase your business to people who can actually afford your services. It's like I keep calling it the new LinkedIn. Now we can definitely showcase our business. SEO, your search engine optimization, which is your SEO. SEO, when people are searching, like when we go to Google and we search and things come up, well, LinkedIn is like that. Profiles are ranked high with Google when you're on LinkedIn. And let me add this. If you are active on LinkedIn, people will find you on Google because LinkedIn will pop up on Google. So the SEO, the search engine optimization 
is great when you're active on LinkedIn. Um, it's great for networking. Uh, I remember we used to network in person and now we're networking online. So you can get connected with the people who need your services. And we're going to talk about that when we get to groups. And you can also position yourself as an industry leader. And you do that through your content, which we will also be talking about that. So, you know, I'm a teacher and I love activities. So if you're home or wherever you are, and you want to participate. I like to start with goals because for me, I write down my goals. I have monthly goals. I have little small weekly goals. I have yearly goals. I like goals. It gives me something to work toward and it keeps me on track with my business and everything else in my life. So list three things that you want social media to do for you. Now we all wanted to bring in customers so we can make money, but that's at the end of the funnel. But social media is a tool. And um, at the beginning of the funnel, there are some things that social media will do for you before bringing in the customers and the income and these are some things that you have to do before that for instance one thing that i like for social media to do for me is to create awareness because i'm a brand specialist so i want social media to create awareness for me and linkedin will do that another thing is secondly I want social media to give me visibility, whereas I'm out there and people can like and comment on my posts. And a third thing that I like for uh, LinkedIn, uh, for LinkedIn and social media to do for me is to build my brand because your brand is more than just your colors or your logo. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room, right? So list the three things that you want social media to do for you. So as we go through the training today, I want you to focus on your three because eventually if you do those things, then you will bring in the customers and you will bring in the income. So now visualize that happening. Okay. So whatever your three were, visualize that happening. I visualize becoming more visible on uh, social media. I, vis I visualize creating awareness, you know, so you want to visualize that happening. And I really like sayings and quotes. When you visualize, then you materialize. And it's so true. And I, I talked about how I write goals down and I've been doing it for years. And it's amazing how I write my goals down. I put them where I can see them right here in, in my office area on the wall. And it's amazing how many things have materialized from the goals that I have visualized. So let's get into the six keys of how to grow your business on LinkedIn. So your first key is your profile page and be sure and write your questions down. You may have some of those for at the end. Sometimes people say, Marsha, do I need a profile page and a business page? And that's a good question. That is up to you if you want to have a profile page and a business page. You can have a business and not have a business page and just make it your profile page, but post to let people know about the person person behind the business. Now, if you have a team, you may want to have a business page. Now, let's say you're a solopreneur like me. I have a profile page, Marsha Lynn Hudson, but on that page, I do talk about my business and I do uh, put content that surrounds my business. So it's up to you if you want to have a profile page and a business page or just a profile page. Now, like I said, it's a solopreneur. You can get away with that as a team. You may want to have a business page also. However, if you create both of them, you must post to both of them because when we create a page um, and we are not consistent and we don't post on it, it hurts our SEO. So keep in mind, do you have time to be active on two? So what should you put on the profile page or your business page? Now, remember, this is your first, the first impression that people get when they go to LinkedIn and look for your business. This is the first impression. So this page tells people what you can do for them. And I teach social media and um, branding it all, all week, every, every week. And I tell my clients, don't just put things about you and your company. Oh, we've been in business this long. Oh, we can do, oh, we do this. Oh, we have this. Oh, we've been doing this. 
people want to know what you can do for them. So it's about them and not as much about me. Now I can say, oh, I'm a photographer. I'm a professor. I've been uh, in business since 2000. I'm a social media person. That's fine and dandy. But when I put, I help you, I help business owners grow a brand. I help business owners uh, with a strategy. So they won't be confused and overwhelmed. That's more important to people than all of my accolades. So make sure on your page and I, I put it like as a sentence in my about, and that sentence says what I can do for them. So with your business, you would, let's say you are a designer, uh, and you may say, I help people beautify their home. So it's about them more so than about us. It sets the tone for your business or brand. So can you imagine when people go to your page and they see how you can help them, they see some nice images, it sets the tone for your, your business or brand. Uh, it should keep people scrolling because we we're, we mainly check on our phones. So when I say scrolling and what that's what we do on our phones, people should not go to your page and leave they should keep scrolling. So if your content or your words that you are putting out there are interesting or it appeals to them, they will keep scrolling. I like uh, Donald Miller and he writes a book uh, called Story Brand. He talks about Story Brand. It's a great book. He's a great uh, speaker and you can look him up, Donald Miller. Um, and basically uh, Donald Miller teaches about how to build your brand through storytelling. And it's, it's a great book. I don't get any revenues from it. I just think it's a great book. And he talks about how words matter. And he said, words matter. So people will keep scrolling if the words on the page matter, but the words have to appeal to them because really people want to know how can you help me? And it is the face of your business. So let's say you're here on the training today and you're thinking, okay, I need to give my LinkedIn page, profile page a facelift. Then that's great. I do it quite a bit. I look at mine every two or three months and see if there's something new. Now, if you haven't done it in this year, you do need to give it an up, uh, a facelift because LinkedIn has changed so much. So even if you had it a certain way in 2020, go in, look at the words, see if, uh, if you can change some words, see if you have something that lets people know what you do for them, make sure it keeps you scrolling. Because when we just talk about ourselves, it doesn't keep people scrolling. So don't forget people look at your LinkedIn on their phone, on their computer, on their tablet, and it needs to look good on all devices. So I tell people when you're giving your LinkedIn page a facelift, check it on your phone, check it on your laptop, check it if you have your, your iPad, check it to see how does it look on different devices. That's very important because it looks different on each device. Okay, um, so the banner. So let's talk about the banner. Basically, when people go to your LinkedIn page and they see this long stretch banner, that's your banner. Your banner can be used for real estate. Okay, and I have a picture coming up with that. So instead of just putting a picture on your, your LinkedIn banner, you can put an image that represents your company. You can put your slogan on your banner, your website address on your banner. It's just the first thing that people see. An offering, if you have one. Some On some people's banner, they may uh, have um, get my free workbook and hit the, lead them to their website. A line that tells how you help your clients. That's very, very important. So um, some people say, oh, I really need to redo my banner. I just had a blue one from LinkedIn or I just have a picture there. Use your banner as real estate. And you can create a banner very easily in Canva. And that's C-A-N-B-A, -A. I use Canva every day. Canva is a very easy design uh, tool and there's a free version of Canva and you can make a LinkedIn banner in Canva in a matter of minutes. Now, let's say you don't want to make it or you're like, well, I don't know how to do it, use Fiverr. I use Fiverr for my banners. If you go to um, Marshall Ann Hudson in LinkedIn, 
you'll see my banner and Fiverr made that banner and it was very uh, reasonable. So you want to use your banner as real estate. Okay. Like I say, put a slogan on it. You can put your web address on it. Uh, what you do for your audience. If you have a freebie, pretend, I like to say, pretend your banner is like a billboard on a major freeway. So here are some examples that I found. Now that uh, example with, uh, without the avatar and the blue, that's the LinkedIn banner. You definitely want to get rid of that. Okay, so now you see here, um, you see the lady in the avatar and she has joined the digital sales transformation movement. And then there's her um, award there, there's a slogan there. So use your banner as real estate. Um, I like to say when people land on your LinkedIn page, what does it say about you? Now here's one at the bottom, Stephen Wright. He puts on there, he has his name, he has what he does, he's a career coach. He has how he's been helping people. So use your banner. His logo is there. Use your banner as real estate and not just a picture. Put some words. I like my website on my banner. Uh, I like my slogan on my banner. So like I said, you can either make that in Canva or you can get Fiverr. You can go to Fiverr and they can make a banner for you. Um, and it's very reason like $10 to make a, a LinkedIn banner. And then they can also use that same banner for your Facebook if you're on Facebook and because that's branding. So you want the same banner on LinkedIn and the same banner on Facebook. It just needs to be resized. So it, it will look right on a phone. Okay. So that's a uh, key one. So the second key, so key one is your profile, your face of the LinkedIn, your page. So the second key is your about section. So as you go through LinkedIn, you have your section where you can type in things about you, okay? And so in your about section, Donald Miller talks about in his book, Story Brands, a great book, Storytelling Sales Brands. And why? Because people like stories. Think about movies. We like movies. Movies are just stories. People uh, like um, down to earth conversation, not so much business jargon. And I know we think when we, we, we on social media, it needs to be about business. Well, the business owner is a regular person too. I'm a business owner, but I'm a regular person and story telling sales brands. So this section is not just your resume. Okay. Give a sentence in that about section and lets people know how you can help them. I can't stress that enough. Um, let them know how your services will benefit them. Okay. Not just, you know, we've been in business for 10 years, but we help you with a plan and a strategy for social media without you being overwhelmed. So you want to let them know how your services benefit them. So you can put all of this in the about section. And of course you can put things about you also let them know how you make their lives easier, better, or stress-free. Just keep remembering it's all about them. It's all about them. It's always about them and not so much about us. Give a sentence about your why, why you started your business, why you're passionate about this business. Remember, it's not just about you. It's never about me. It's always about what you can do for the person who lands on your LinkedIn profile. So your about section should be, like I say, a storytelling section and you can feel free to take a screenshot. I had to actually revamp mine because I had quite a bit of things about me. Now, of course you can put some things about your business in there, of course, but you want to be sure and put mainly what your business can do for them, what your business, how your business can benefit them, how your business can make or your services make their lives easier and better. All right. So the third key, your feature section, I really like this section. It's a new section and I hate that it's not on the business page. Maybe LinkedIn will eventually add it, but the feature section is only available at this time on the profile page. So I have a profile page. Um, Marshall Ann Hudson on LinkedIn and I added a feature section. And so what this page will do is you can put links on the feature section and they will go to other places and they pop up when people go to your LinkedIn. And so you can put your website and an image, like you can put an image 
and your website on the feature page uh, section and when they click it it will go to your website you and you can put like four or five features and they slide on, on your linkedin so you can put a second one if you have a blog put an image and when they click it it can go to your blog because what you do is you just put your url link in the in the feature section let's say you have a podcast and podcasts are becoming increasingly popular people like them they're out walking they can look, listen to your podcast they're at the gym they can listen to your podcast and so they can um you can link that to your feature section and when they click it it goes to your podcast same for products let's say you you sell things or you have products and you they can click it and go to your product or even an article or something so the features uh section is really cool and I'm hoping they add it to the business page, but right now it's just on the profile page. So you can use the uh, LinkedIn feature section and you can feel free to take a, a screenshot for uh, all of your other sites. Maybe you have an offering or you have a service or you have a, um, a video that you're doing or you can send them to YouTube. So this, this section is, is really cool to create visibility in other places besides your LinkedIn page. So we're back to our activity. So list three important things that you want people to know about your brand. So if you're participating in the activities and you did your three things in the beginning that you want social media to do for you, list three important things that you want people to know about your brand. And I always say, put them on a post-it note, Put them up where you can see it all the time because it's something about seeing your dreams, seeing your vision, seeing your ideas on a daily basis that brings it to fruition. So, for instance, let's think about these are big brands that I study. They've done well on branding themselves. I like Starbucks, Apple, Target they have done a great job at branding themselves. And so what are three things that you want people to know about your brand? Well, Apple wants us to know this is more than just a phone. It's a lifestyle. This is more than just a phone. It's a business tool. So what do you want people to know about your brand? Starbucks wants us to know this is more than just about coffee because why do we go there and pay three and four and five dollars when we have a Keurig machine at home? I have one at home, but I'm always at Starbucks. They want you to know this is more than just about coffee, you know? So what do you want people to know about your brand? It should be more than just about your business name. The best way to predict the future is to create it. And I really like this saying because it's true. If you want something for your business, if you want to grow, if you want to take it to a new level, when in, we have to create it. And, and it doesn't have to be something so big and something so large or a big task. Simple, small actions on a daily basis will help you create the future you want. 20 minutes a day listen to a youtube video for your business 15 minutes a day writing down some things for your business 30 minutes a day spending some time uh, on your social site it doesn't have to be big it just needs to be simple small daily actions all right so key number four your content and so this is the biggest thing people ask me marcia what do I put on LinkedIn? What do I put? And so content is so important. Now we don't want to just promote our services and products. We want to give content that's valuable, that's helpful, that's informative and even entertaining. Okay. Because when we sit down to write about our content and think about our content, this is my favorite way to create content. I'm usually with a pen and with my paper, with my laptop, I have my coffee. This is my favorite way to think about what type of content am I going to create for the upcoming week. And if you've listened to any of my um, presentations, I always talk about a pre-planning day. A pre-planning day has been a game changer for me as a busy entrepreneur who wears so many hats, and I'm sure you do too. And I usually pick a, a pre-planning day on a Saturday or a Sunday, whichever day. I, it may take me about an hour, 
or an hour and a half. And it may, you know, be a Sunday evening when I have a little downtime and I pretty much just start thinking about what am I going to create for the upcoming week? What am I going to, what kind of content do I want to put out there that's valuable or helpful? or entertaining or informative. So when you want to know what kind of content should you post on LinkedIn, I always ask myself these questions. And so I would say to you, ask yourself these questions. This is how you know this is good content to post. Does this content give value? So let's say you're doing a piece of valuable content on a Monday. Does it give value? then yes, that's the kind of content to post on LinkedIn. You may be giving some tips or something, you know. Um, does this content solve a problem? If it can solve a pain point, that's some great content. For me, if I posted how to manage your social media in 30 minutes a day, that solves a problem for people who are busy. And so that's how I know, okay, this is good content to post. Does this content motivate? So sometimes I'll put a motivational um, piece of content on LinkedIn. My audience loves it. It may say yesterday was um, Monday, the beginning of the week. And I said, it's Monday, let's do this week. Let's make it happen. Motivational content. Does this content make people feel good or smile? So it sometimes on Friday, you can put a, a piece of light content, something funny or something fun. It makes people just feel good. Does this content educate? And that's really huge when it comes to LinkedIn or any of your social sites. You as the industry leader that you are, you should put advice from your industry, tips, suggestions, answer questions from your industry. People want knowledge. They love knowledge. I know I love knowledge. And so your content can educate. And does this content solve a pain point or end a struggle? Can you imagine if you posted to LinkedIn something that helped people to end a struggle that they were having and they may say, wow, I didn't know that. I'm so glad she posted that or he posted that. And of course you can always promote your services and products also. And we're gonna talk about that a little later, but mainly you wanna follow the 80-20 rule, okay? 80% of the time, this is the type of content you want to post. 20% of the time you can promote your services and products. Just remember not to be overly promotional because number one, the algorithms don't care for it. They want you to pay for ads instead of promoting yourself for free. And in the algorithms, which are the machines that run these social sites, won't let people see, won't let many people see. Plus people kind of get tired of seeing people just promoting their services, promoting their services. So here are some content themes that I use and I wanted to share with you to make it easy. If you say, okay, I'm going to post on my LinkedIn three days a week because you don't have to post five days a week, okay? I post five or six days, but that's my business. I'm a social media strategist. But as a business owner, three days, that's good. That's enough each week, two to three days. So you may decide, I'm going to do themes to make it easy for me and on Mondays, you do you call a motivational Monday. So if you post on Mondays, just post a motivational saying or a tip. I have books here. I I found a book at Barnes and Noble and it had like 1000 motivational sayings. And so you can find those. You can find them online, write them down for in on your pre-planning day and maybe get 10 or 12, 12 of them. That's three, three months. So motivational Monday is a good thing. Tuesday tips, you may give some tips from your industry or your business and people come to look forward to those tips. Wednesday wisdom, you can share a link from your blog or your podcast. Uh, Thursday, and we're going to talk about short videos. I call them snackable videos. They're one to two minute videos with your phone. So you don't have to do any editing. You don't have to do YouTube. Just pick up your phone, make a one to two minute video. And that could be your Thursday or it could be your Wednesday, you know, for your video. Friday, you highlight your company or tell your why, why you're passionate about your company or what moves you. So storytelling sales brands is like 
Donald Miller says, it, it, it does. And people like stories. That's why we like movies. That's like why we like TV shows, drama. We like stories. And we're human on social media. And we want to be likable and we want to be social. That's what gets people to purchase from us. And I'm sure you've heard of the no like and trust factor. When people get to know you through showing up on social media, they get to like you through your content and they come to trust you because you're consistent. And when they know, like, and trust you, then they, they head over to your website to learn more about you. And that's when you convert them to become customers to either call you or send you an email. Um, so don't take the social out of social media. Don't be overly promotional. Uh, it's hard to build a brand promoting and selling. Be valuable, give valuable information, give tips, give uh, inform informative information because people really do relate to that. So a good post will include three things. When you post to LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or whatever, you wanna have three things in your post. And this is from the research, an image or a video, something visual, some good content like we just talked about and hashtags and um, people, some people say, well, what are those and what do they do? Hashtags help you to be found. They help you to be discovered. You definitely want to put them in your posts. And I, I thought about giving a, a, a training on hashtag, but I have some things on my website for free that you can go and get information on hashtag. But um, for Facebook, and I'll deter a little, you only want to put two hashtags when you post to Facebook. And that's for now, okay? Facebook doesn't like a lot of hashtag. Now, if you're doing Instagram, you can put up to 30 hashtag. And 15 to 30, Instagram likes hashtags. Even though Facebook owns it, it's just a little different. Now for LinkedIn, you can put up to seven hashtags. Sometimes people think if I put more hashtags, I'll be found and discovered. No, the algorithms, they don't work like that. If you put six, seven, eight, ten 10 hashtags on Facebook, Facebook, the algorithms won't show it. Okay, so if you put five hashtags on Instagram, you you want the algorithms to make your post more visible and what the algorithms will say oh for instagram not enough hashtag instagram likes 15 to 30. for linkedin you don't want to put 10 or 15 hashtag you, you know people think if i put more i'll be discovered it doesn't work like that with the algorithm so stick to six five for linkedin but I always post an image good content and hashtags and you can put it right in the content uh, as soon as you finish the content you put your hashtag like for your business name mine would be hashtag marshall and hudson always make a hashtag with your business name and then maybe three or four more that relate to your industry or that's trending something like that for an image you can find stock images free images not from google because you don't want they may not be copyright free so don't go to google and get an image you can go to unsplash un s p l a s h you have many free uh copyright free images thousands really i like unsplash you can go to pixels p-e-x-e-l-s many many um copyright free images you always want an image to match your content you can take them with your phone i love going walking and sometimes i'll be out walking and i'll take a picture from my phone with my phone i think this would be good for one of my posts so just be creative and save a, a, a library of images for your post and the, and then there your your hashtags so you have your image your content and your maybe five or six hashtags for linkedin so let's talk about video and LinkedIn. Now, when you start doing video, you want to stick to a schedule and people say, Marsha, I don't like being on video. I get it. I do. I do. I get it. Or, oh, I don't know. Am I going to sound crazy on video or what are people going to think? I totally get it. I felt like that in the beginning too, but I had to get over myself because video will really grow your business because now people get to see you, they get to hear you. And I don't think people are so into, oh, this is how you look. I I watch videos and I'm, I'm watching them to get information mainly. So um, I like to say, if you're going to start video, and you want it to be easy and you don't want to add so much stuff to your already busy schedule, do what I call it snackable video with your phone. 
And what I do is I pick up my phone. I make sure some window light is coming in my face. I've already pre-planned because I do that on the weekend. One video, you can do one video a week. And it may be Wednesday. That may be your video day or Thursday. And so plan out what is it you want to say from the content? Do you want to educate? Do you want to talk about Talk from your about category, about your why or your business or your, your struggles or your passion. Do you want to do a be behind the scenes with your video? So with your phone, it makes it so easy now. And if you can make the video with your phone, if you don't like it, delete the video until you make one that's, that works for you. And that's the good thing about uh, using it and making a video with your phone, with your camera phone and the video, you videotape it. If you don't like it, delete it, videotape it again. If you don't like it, delete it. And when you see one that you like, then you upload it to your LinkedIn and that is really going to grow your business. So you upload your video to your LinkedIn. When you upload a video, you don't need an image because remember it's an image or a video, something visual with each post. Then you put your content, put a little content maybe about your video and your hashtags, okay? And that is a great way to start building a brand and actually getting people to other places. For instance, in your video, you can say at the end, be sure and check out my website for, maybe you have something there. Or you can say, be sure and follow us on YouTube and give that information. And now you send people to your YouTube. All right, be sure and check out our blog. So the good thing about the video is, and in the one to two minutes, what I call the snackable video, what I do is I have a, a beginning, a middle and an end. So I give an introduction of who I am or, you know, or I have a little saying at the beginning. And then in the middle, I give the meat of my video, maybe two or three tips or, 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 or something from my, I have six content buckets that I use. And so I may give um, something from one of my content buckets and my buckets are the about bucket, the behind the scenes bucket, the motivation bucket, the um, video bucket, promote my service bucket, education bucket. So I use my buckets for a little snackable content. And then at the end, so you have your intro, your middle and your end. And at the end, you can give your call to action and send them somewhere. So video is great for LinkedIn. And so if you're thinking, oh, I don't want to do video, <laughs> uh, then send me an email and I'll talk you into it. Okay. Because it will really help you with your business. So let's look at the fifth key. So groups, LinkedIn groups, uh, of course, there are so many groups for every industry. And either you can join a LinkedIn group, one or two. I like to say don't join too many because you want to be active in the group. If you join one or two LinkedIn groups, then you want to be active at least once a week in that group. You know, go in the group, post something or like or comment on somebody else's uh, post but be active at least once a week. So don't join groups and never be active because people, when you post in a group, you show up, you're visible. People see your profile and they will, uh, if they're interested in what you're posting and how you're connecting in the groups, then they'll check out your profile. So groups are very important. So you can join a group or create a group. And so I did create a group, uh, I think a few, uh, maybe a year or so ago, but I called it uh, Women Writers Who Rock because I'm a, I'm a writer. Uh, but I deleted the group because I got so busy and I didn't get to keep it up. And I always suggest if you can't keep something up, then delete it because it's worse. But I did create a group and at that time it worked well for me and I had other women join the group and we would participate. So you could always create a group. You can become uh, a part of a community when you either join a group or create a group. It's so easy to create a group too. And you can watch a YouTube video on how to create a group on LinkedIn. I love YouTube video. You can learn anything from YouTube video. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people will get to meet you in your brand. So let's say you're in a really good group and it doesn't have to be 10,000 people. What's this a good group of a thousand, a thousand Pat Flynn in his book. And I like Pat Flynn also. Uh, these are social media um, teachers, Donald Miller, Pat Flynn. 
he talks about how we only need a thousand good fans and uh, he calls them super fans. And so we think, oh, I need 10,000 followers, 5,000. He said, you only need a thousand good super fans. And some people say you only need a few hundred good in your email, people who are actually buying from you, connecting with you. So what's the use in having 10,000 followers, but nobody's connecting and nobody's buying. It's just a look then. I got 10,000 followers versus a thousand good ones and people are connecting or buying. So you become an industry name or a leader when you join a group or create a group. You can meet potential customers and that's a really good thing. So even in the group, you don't want to promote or sell. You want to give value, tips, tools, strategies from your industry. Let's say you're a real estate professional. Um, what if you posted in the group um, interest rates or it's a good time for sellers or it's a buyer's market. You're giving information then, you see? Um, so people come to know, like, and trust you. That's that know, like, and trust factor. And it's really true. When people come to know you because you're showing up and they come to like you through the content that you post, they come to trust you because you're consistent. That's what gets likes and followers to become customers. Okay, so here's a, a um, screenshot here of a few um, groups and uh, that I joined. And I really do like groups because you just, you can learn so much from groups. And so this, I had a group, female entrepreneurs who rock online and social media today, look how many groups are in there. So media and marketing professionals, entrepreneur and small business forum. So you don't want to just join groups just to join them. You want to network and learn and, and let people learn from you. So what to do in groups, okay? So comment and build relationships. That's what you wanna do. And you know, I know you're busy, so just decide once a week or twice a month, but you wanna show up. Um, so when you show up in your groups, you put your company out there, you keep your company on the mind of others. Uh, when you participate, your brand becomes human. People do business with people, not just businesses. Uh, people really like to do business with people. They like to know, oh, okay, this is a person I'm dealing with and not just a big business. Um, so get from behind the, the business curtain, show your personality, tell them about your why, tell them about your struggles. Always contribute value to the groups and you will definitely go your brand. People look forward to it. Um, I had someone message me on LinkedIn yesterday and say, you give, you always give so much good advice. And I reached out and thanked her for it. Thank you. Because I put a lot of tips and tools on, on LinkedIn. So you can comment on other people's posts. This is what you can do in groups. You can encourage and motivate people through your own posts, through your content. You can make connections and communicate, be a contributor, be a contributor in groups and give value. You'll be surprised at how you can get clients from that. And I have gotten clients just from doing this in LinkedIn. I am a headshot photographer and I actually have to shoot one in two, in two days. And so many people reach out to me from LinkedIn. I need a headshot. You know, I need business, uh, images for my website. And I've gotten so much of that from doing what I'm teaching you today on uh, LinkedIn. So we're at the sixth key. Yay. We're almost at the end for our Q and a, so make sure you have those cute questions, making connections. So I tell people social media is a two way street. We don't want to just post and put a picture and put our hashtags and go away. We have to make connections. If we want to grow on LinkedIn, it is a professional networking site. Okay. And so when I think about that, how do we network without making connections? That's how you build a good um, bank of networking people. So connections and communicate. Um, establish that that no like and trust factor. You can Google it. It's huge. The no like and trust factor. People will buy from you when you do that. People will buy from you. They get to know you. They get to like you. They trust you. That's when they open their pocketbooks. So read the connections that LinkedIn suggests. LinkedIn will suggest connections for you. So if you're, if you start to be active, LinkedIn will say, well, you may know these people or you may be interested in this. So 
read those connections and then see, go check out their profile and see if that's someone you want to connect with. So LinkedIn is very good about suggesting. Connect with five to 10 new people weekly. You can do that one day out of the week. You could just go and decide, okay, I need to connect, make five connections, send out a message to connect and they can reply or accept. So that's how you build your connection. But I always go check out the profile first. I check out the about page first before I decide to connect. Message some of your present connections. Don't see them. Now you have connections already on LinkedIn. Go to there, message them. You know, sometimes I will go to some of them. I do this quite a bit because LinkedIn brings quite a bit of business for me. So I've gone all in on LinkedIn. So I will go in and I get alerts on my phone and I will go in and message uh, some of my connections, I might just say, how's it going today? How's your business going? Uh, how are you doing today? Just regular things. It's not about selling. It's just about communicating. Sometimes I'll go in and it, it, it may be a Friday and I may say, well, I know you've been busy this week. I hope you take, take a break and have a good weekend. It's just that simple. I'm keeping connections going. I'm communicating. It's not always about selling. Now, sometimes I'll message people in LinkedIn and say, oh, I'm giving a webinar. Be sure and check it out. Or I may say, oh, I've created this. So, you know, you just want to mix it up. Engage on your connections posts. And that's a really good thing. And sometimes I will go into my connections, look at their posts, and I'm like, I like this post, especially my clients. When they're doing it, I'll go in and say, you're doing a great job because you can message people privately. Everybody doesn't have to see. So I may go in and message like, I'm so proud of you. You're doing a great job. That is a great thing. So engage on, on their posts. And now if you want it to be public, you can go to their posts and like, and you can go to their posts and comment and say, these are great tips. But when I'm doing how's your weekend or whatever, I message them privately, okay? So you can decide, but don't forget connections and communication go together. And so here I, I took a picture of one of my pages from August, how we were just kind of connecting, you know? And that's what people like is just everyday conversation. And this is what I do privately in messages. So here's an action plan um, before we conclude. Here's an action plan for LinkedIn. And if you do some pre-planning, like I say, the weekend before each week, a Saturday or Sunday, whichever works best for you. It normally takes me about an hour, an hour and a half. But sometimes if I'm out of my pre-planning day and I'm really out enjoying it, it may take me longer. I may go to a little cafe. I love being in nature. I may go to a little cafe here in Houston, sit out, take my notes, my notebook, get my coffee. I may be there two hours or so, three, but you don't have to stay that long. That's just my thing. I like it. Or I may go to Barnes and Noble and sit outside, get my coffee. But it's my planning time. And it's, it's just a game changer. Um, so this action plan should, uh, if you do the pre-planning day, then your post shouldn't take you more than 20 to 30 minutes or two to three days, unless you auto schedule. And of course you, you have auto schedules like uh, Buffer or Hootsuite, you know, where you can auto schedule LinkedIn. So the key to growing your business on LinkedIn is to be active. You have to be active, you have to show up, you have to be visible and uh, consistency is key. And life can be so distracting, right? This happened this week, this happened that week. Oh, we had to go here. Oh, it's our vacation. Oh, I had to move. It's so much stuff, but you can't let the things of life um, take away you showing up. I think about it uh, when I post and connect and do my, um, I call it my visibility time with social media because I'm everywhere on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I think of it when I take those 20 to 30 minutes each day as a time of I'm building my business. I'm doing something for my business versus not doing it, that I'm not doing something for my business. I'm not building it. So the question is, do I want to build my business? Do I want to grow it? Do I love it? I do. Do I want it to, to continue to grow? Well, I have to put that time in, you know, and not let the other things that come up in life steal that time because 
that time is too important for your business. So the, the action plan that I will say for you, post to LinkedIn two to three times a week, at least two. Okay. If you're busy at least two and don't let anything steal that time. Uh, three is great. You don't need to do more than three unless you can post before 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. If you don't make 9 a.m., that's okay. Do a 10 or 10 30, but don't let it get away from you. Uh, make new connections at least one day out of the week, like we talked about. So one of your two to three days can be your day where you make some connections and engage on your connections page and post to your groups at least two times a week. So this is a good action plan for LinkedIn. And if you are here uh, today on the training and you're thinking, I really want to get in on the new LinkedIn. I call it the new LinkedIn because it's so different from the way it was two years ago. It is. And if you say, I really want to go out and use these six keys, it's a great start. These six keys are a great start for growing, building a business on LinkedIn, building visibility. Um, decide what two days you want to use or what three days. Decide your time. Um, decide what day you're going to make your connection and just put that in. It shouldn't take 20, more than 20 minutes. It really won't take 30 minutes when you sit down to do it, especially if you do the pre-planning. It may take 15 or 20 minutes, really. So all you have to do is decide. And I tell myself that I have so many ideas running around in my head, so many things I want to do. I have to take a break sometimes. It's like, okay, let those can wait. But the things that are very important for my business and me as a business owner, I have to decide. I have to decide to do it. I have to decide to start. And I can't say, okay, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to start next month after this happens, or I'm going to start in two months after this happened. It, that doesn't work well. It's now it's like you're on the training. Now I always tell people when you go to a website or a webinar or a training and you're taking those and you're thinking, I want to add at least one thing to my business, or I want to do this, about do it within the next two days. Do it within the next 48 hours. Do it within the next 48 hours. Don't let more than three or four because it gets away from us. But all we have to do is decide. Have you ever been in a place where you said, I'm going to, for instance, write a book. And then three years later, you hadn't started <laughs> or five years later, or I'm going to um, decide to do this. And eight years later, you hadn't done it. That's how it gets away from us. And I, I've been guilty of that too. But I've decided, decide on the one to two things that are most important right now. Yay, we made it to the end. I hope you have your Q&A, your questions. So I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I'm always so excited about bringing training and I'm always so uh, happy uh, for uh, uh that I'm invited to come here and do this. So you can always find me everywhere. <laughs> and on my website, it's a lot of free resources there. You can go and download those, but we are ready for uh, our Q and A. Okay. Thank you, Marsha. Let me put my glasses on so I can read them. Uh, <laughs> I had a couple of questions. How long should you keep an image or a video on your page before it becomes stale? Like, is there a rule of thumb? Okay, that's a good question. I, um, because when you post, it just continues to go down, down, down. I never take mine off unless I go and look at it and think, okay, I don't need this up. But when I put an image or a video on LinkedIn, I never take it off. It just goes away. It goes down, down, down oh, okay. as you, as you post. So it just continues to go down. So you don't really have to take it off or whatever. Worry about it getting stale. It goes away anyway. Okay. Does that go for uh, images also uh, in the logo? Are you talking about on the banner? Yeah. Banner. That's what I was. Oh, okay. For. That's a great question. I, that is a great question. Sometimes I will ch change mine up maybe uh, twice in the year, but if not, I think it does go still if it's been up there for years. Mm -hmm. So you may want to change it once a year or once every two years, but you don't want an image or something that's been up there for five and six years. You do want to make a change with gotcha. it. Gotcha. 
Uh, what are some of the other ways that businesses can use LinkedIn? Besides the six keys for today? Uh-huh. Um, that's a good question. Let me think, think, think. Um, well, some people uh, pay for premium. Mm -hmm. I don't pay for premium. And if you, you know, kind of do a little bit more research in the premium, there are other ways. And so today I talked about the six basic ways to get started, but you can do LinkedIn learning. You can do uh, LinkedIn training. Um, you can do, of course, you can do advertising. That's another way to grow. I didn't talk about advertising. You can do LinkedIn ads. So those are some things you can probably do a little bit more research on YouTube videos or Google LinkedIn ads, LinkedIn advertising, LinkedIn premium, LinkedIn learning, all of that. Some people even put training on LinkedIn, but I think you have to pay. So those are some more advanced ways of growing your uh, LinkedIn channel. Okay, and that, that reminds me, didn't LinkedIn also buy lynda.com? They did. Training. Yeah. Yes. So you the LinkedIn about Linda. So mm -hmm. you can check on that. You get a lot of training there um, from Linda.com. So check that out. They sure did. Okay. Okay. And uh, Elizabeth wants to know, have you done any paid campaigns on LinkedIn and have you uh, seen any return on them? <laughs> That's a great question. I've only done Facebook advertising because I read that Facebook advertising gets you better returns because you can advertise on Facebook and Instagram, but I haven't done any on LinkedIn. Now I've been thinking about it, but I've been too busy spending my money on Facebook ads because now I asked a few people who had done some LinkedIn advertising, some of my clients. And so far, I hadn't really gotten any feedback on how well they worked. So I can't really give you any advice on LinkedIn advertising because I haven't done it. Okay. Well, I think that's all of our questions, Marsha. Uh, I want to thank you so much. We always enjoy your uh, your training. You always give us so many wonderful uh bits of wisdom uh, <laughs> and i want to thank everyone that joined us today um and remind you that we'll be sending out a survey and uh please respond because we use the information we receive from the surveys to improve our programs uh we have on our we have our upcoming webinars we have one tomorrow uh, from our retail specialist, Mark Wilson, uh, about fulfillment in 2021. Uh, then on Thursday, we have Lorna Kibbe back listening that thing you don't want to hear about. <laughs> Next week, we're going to have our update on the uh, hottest topic in town, the PPP. And partnership agreements we will have Tisha Dodge, our legal uh, presenter, back and then Lorna Kibbe at the end of next week, writing effective business messages. Um, and you can register for those, any of those webinars or any of our webinars through our website at www.sbdc.nctc.edu. You can also uh, set up a contact um, and schedule an appointment with an advisor we have some resources that are also online there. And I want to thank our partners, the Small Business Administration, the state of Texas, the North Texas SBDC Regional Office, and North Central Texas College. If it wasn't for them and through, uh, through their grants, uh, we wouldn't be able to provide you with information like we've done today. Thank you all for joining today, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for Fulfillment 2021. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you for having me. Thank you.